So most of you are probably familiar with the Sky CPX2. It kind of got a bad rap, having some issues. Sky Pistols just sent me their brand new DVG-1 RD. Now they actually introduced this at SHOT Show in 2020. And I've been on the list to get one since then, and they just now really got them in production. Now, from what I understand, they are now going to ship with this Riton Optics MPRD2 on them. Now, this is Riton's brand new optic that fits the shield footprint. It's a shake awake, an auto brightness adjust. It's a nice little optic, but the pistol is a striker fired pistol, has a straight trigger. Now, the original Sky got a really bad rap for this horde trigger on it, too. It's a very long trigger and a heavy trigger. It's a double action. And they tried to correct that with this one with the striker fired. It's got the straight pull trigger, a lot shorter trigger pull. But the reset is still all the way out like the original Skies. I think I'm riding the slide lock real bad. Just the size of this, just my fat hands makes me ride it. It's sided in, it hits good when I do my part, but the trigger's just, eh, it's a little heavy for a striker fired trigger. About six and a half, seven pounds, so. I'm hoping it maybe lessens up just a little because I am definitely pulling it, so. I'm gonna go reload it and I'll be right back. Spoiler alert, stay tuned just a little bit longer in the video and I'll explain what was going on with the trigger and how I fixed it and why it's a whole lot better now. I am definitely resting my thumb on that slide lock really bad. I'll try to get my thumb down below it. It's just not, I just can't find anywhere for my thumb to rest. It's not on that slide lock. I'll try to put it down below. It. Yeah, it's definitely why it's not locking open. But the way it's just built, just right where my thumb really wants to rest is that slide lock. Put a few more on it as fast as I can. Ah. Nice little double feed there. Clear that. Now, to be fair, that's the uh, old magazine out of the other one, so it could have been caused by it. It's not the new magazine there because they do use the same mags. Riding that slide lock again. I'm gonna reload it again. Got that old mag in it again. I think that's gonna be the oh yeah. That's definitely gonna be the problem with it is this mag. Failed to feed that last round too. Yeah.
One thing I have noticed when I'm loading it, you can see this one mag has a lot of the wear, finish wore off of it, is that I can load this mag without the Uplula speed loader. These kill your thumbs, the new mags loading them. So I'm wondering if maybe the spring's a little weak in this old mag. So we'll try it again and see if it does it again, but I'm gonna blame that on the mag for now. Now these are 147 grain here, some 147 grain Federals. The, what I was shooting earlier was some S&B 115 grain. Let's see if it likes these bullets. Try not to ride that slide lock, but I still am. That one bit the dirt. Fell a feed. And that is the new magazine there. This is the old mag here. That one, the nose just hung up on the feed ramp. Fed fine. All right, let me go load them up again. I'm gonna load one of them up with some SIG V Crown and see if it'll feed through it. All right, loaded them back up. I just loaded some more 115 grain in them, but now, Let's take the original CPX2 here. Now I haven't shot this one in several years. Oh yeah, that trigger's horrible. There's the problem I hate. I don't let it reset all the way. It goes all the way out. And I ride the slide lock on this one too. So, see, not that great. Let's see if I do any better with this one here. Still the same SMB 115 grain. <sighs> I don't know. I got it a little better with it, a lot faster for sure, but. The trigger's so much better on this one than it is on the old one, it's not even funny. All right, I got some 124 grain SIG V Crown. Now I've had a few guns that I've shot that didn't really like to feed this that well with the big opening on the end, so we'll see what this one does. Because it did hang up on 147 grain. Let's see what it does with this. Fed that fine. All right, let's go inside and we'll take a closer look at it, see what comes in the box, and we'll give you the specs on it and all that. So, see you in there. All right, so before we go any further in the video, I'm going to explain to you what was going on with the trigger. So, they advertise this trigger as a five and a half pound flat face trigger. And mine out of the box was pretty heavy, just feeling of it in the first few shots. And then the whole way through shooting it, it was just gritty and heavy and almost felt like it was getting worse the longer I shot it. So, anyways, I measured it when I came in from shooting, and it was measuring real randomly between like six and seven and a half pounds. So I thought, well, that's strange, but whatever. So I wasn't real thrilled with the trigger at all. So I took the gun down to clean it before I made the video. I just wanted to clean it up some and all that. And I noticed there's a lot of grit down inside there around the trigger assembly. All inside there, actually. All inside the slide and everything. I thought, that's odd. So I went ahead and sprayed it down, scrubbed it down with a brush, cleaned it all up, wiped it all down and everything and got it all finished cleaning up. And then when I put it back together, I dry fired it a few times. And I thought, wow, the trigger feels totally different. Doesn't feel gritty, feels a lot lighter. So it was right before dark then. So I grabbed a box of ammo and the mags and the gun and ran out to the range real quick. Well, I use run relatively because you know, I don't run. But anyways, I ran out there real quick and shot a box of ammo through it and I was actually hitting my target with the whole magazine not missing any shots and it was grouping pretty nicely. I thought, wow, it's a lot better. So I was kind of hard on the trigger in the first part of the video, 
Now, when I got the gun, I pulled it straight out of the box and just went and shot it. I don't clean, didn't clean it, didn't oil it, didn't do anything, which I probably should have on this gun. But usually any gun I get in for testing or any gun I buy for that matter that's a carry gun, I just take it straight out of the box and shoot it just because I want to see what it'll do in that condition. And did the same thing with this one and probably should have cleaned this one. But needless to say, I cleaned it up, shot 50 more rounds through it. When I took it down after that, it looked clean still. So I'm thinking maybe that was some debris left in there from the manufacturing process or something. I'm not sure. Now when I retested the trigger weight over 10 pulls with my trigger scale, it was coming in at 5 pounds, 7 ounces. And it was only just an ounce or two difference with every pull. Not like a whole pound difference between pulls. So that was... A lot better for sure. And it makes it a lot easier to shoot. It's hard to shoot a gun when you got a six pound trigger one time and a seven and a half pound trigger the next. It's makes it pretty tough to shoot. So that definitely helped it. And maybe as I find some more cheap ammo, because I'm not burning up a whole bunch more of my ammo through it, I'll do some more video with it. Now let's talk about the malfunctions with it. Now I've got 330 rounds through this now, counting the last 50 I just put through it. But the only malfunction I had with the magazines that came with the gun was I had one fail to feed out of 147 grain. It hit the feed ramp and didn't go up. But when I was editing a video, I noticed I knew I was trying to keep my thumb off the slide stop on it. And when I was editing the video, I noticed I had a horrible grip on it. Just horrible. And if you watch that part of the video again, you can see the guns not being held right or held well. So I'm going to attribute that to me not holding the gun right. On that one because it never failed again on it even with the sig v crown and i've had those hang up on feed reps several times in different guns so i think that's pretty good the other malfunctions were all due to the magazine out of that cpx2 i borrowed and he could only find one magazine for it and the you know you could see all the finish wear on it and i noticed when loading it like i said it was like a real weak spring but whenever it did malfunction, I noticed the rounds were pointed almost straight. The top round would be almost pointed straight down in the magazine. So pretty sure that was only to do with that magazine. Now we'll go over the specs of the DVG-1 RD real quick. It's a striker fired 9mm, of course. It weighs 17.4 ounces unloaded. Now the gun without the optic is right at 5 inches tall. It's 6 inches long and 1 inch wide. It has a 3.1 inch barrel and the slide is black nitride coated. It has front and rear slide serrations and they're actually pretty decent serrations. You can get a pretty good grip on them. Now it comes with 10 plus one magazines and it uses the same mags as the CPX2. And like I said, the trigger is a flat face trigger and it is five and a half pounds. Now to take it down, you do have to have some sort of tool, I think. You might be able to get that with your fingernail if you really tried, but you need something to hook in behind here and pop it out. I just use a little screwdriver for it. Mag release is just on one side. Now I know the old CPX2s had a lot of complaints about the frame pin walking out on it and these have not moved from where they were so I'm guessing Sky corrected that with the DVG-1s. Now this of course is the DVG-1 RD which is red dot and with it you lose the rear sight but the right on optics does have a groove cut you can use that as a rear sight and the front sight Sky says they take a common sight so I would say by the looks of it, it's a Glock sight. But one thing I will say, it's just a plastic white dot front sight. It does not co-witness with this at all. Like you're shooting maybe five feet at 15 yards. You're shooting five feet high at 15 yards when you try to use that without the dot. So I think it'd be an easy, cheap fix. Just grab a little bit taller sight and put on there. Now when you buy it, you don't get a whole lot of extras with it. But they're keeping the cost really, really reasonable on this for a red dot equipped gun. You can't even hardly buy a red dot ready gun for the price they're selling it with a dot on it. So all you get whenever you buy it is the gun, two magazines, cardboard box, which I'm fine with. I don't care about the case. You get some different floor plates without the finger rest on them for the mags. And you get a cheap little gun lock and your paperwork, of course. So that's really all it comes with, which is fine. It doesn't really need anything else. And I like where they're keeping the price down. Now, as far as my complaints go on the gun, I've really got two complaints. I had three, but one of them solved with the trigger issue. But my other complaint, my biggest complaint, still boils down to the trigger. Now, it is clear, but I'll try to get this in here. You can see the trigger. It's got a nice pull break. It's got a good break, and it's not gritty now, surprisingly. But what's the reset? Hopefully, it's picking it up. 
all the way out before it resets. Which is not as bad as the old CPX2 because that trigger was like your finger hit the front of the trigger guard before it reset. And I always had a tendency to pull it too quick back. But this one is definitely all the way out. Rack it again. Try to keep it on camera. There it is. There's just a fraction. And then you take it up and hit the... But yeah, that's my biggest complaint about it is I don't like how far out the reset is. But that is something you can get used to and get around with just a little bit of practice with it. Not a problem. My other complaint is probably just me. And like I mentioned before, the way I grip it, I'm always riding the slide stop. That's really my only two complaints with the gun. And that one's probably all just on me and my big giant hands. Now, as far as size goes, it's a nice size gun. And, you know, you get 10 plus one rounds in it. And it's identical in size to the old CPX2. I mean, if you put them on top of each other, they're almost identical in every way. They say the grip's a little smaller on this one. I didn't really notice it, but I guess it is. Now let's talk a little bit about the optic. The optic is Rytop Optics brand new 3 Tactics MPRD2. Now this is a shake awake dot and it has auto brightness adjustment. And so far it's done really well with the auto brightness. I mean, taking it from inside to outside in the dark or inside to outside in the bright sunlight, it's almost immediate change. So there's no worries about that. Now it does have a 3 MOA dot. I'm sure you can't see that on the camera, but that's what it has. And it is the shield RMSC or whatever footprint. So you can put, you know, if you want to change the optic out, it'll or Romeo Zero or the Hollow Sun or the Swamp Fox. There's several different optics that'll fit this, the shield, of course. Now, one thing I will add is that the optic came installed on the gun, but did not come with a battery installed. So you have to remove the optic and put a battery in it. Now, mine did not come with a battery. Not a big deal. It was a CR2032, so it's a pretty common battery. But just so you know, you may want to have one of those on hand before you pick up the gun or when you pick up the gun because it did not come with one. And yours may, I don't know, maybe they just forgot to put it in there. Now, originally these pistols were supposed to come with a Crimson Trace red dot, and I was surprised whenever I got it in and had the Riton on it. So I emailed Sky back and they said, yeah, they are all gonna now ship with the Riton optic, and I think this is tremendously better than a Crimson Trace optics I've had some experience with. So this dot's a nice little dot, seems really well made. I think Riton's really got some good stuff coming out now, so be sure to check them out. This dot has an MSRP of $299 by itself. And they're still keeping the MSRP on the whole package at $399. And I want to thank Sky for sending this out to me. And hopefully they're not too mad at me for bashing them for not cleaning it out good before they send it out. But hey, it is what it is. It, no, it really is a nice little gun. I'm glad we got those the problem with the trigger fixed. And I think it's good to go now. And I'll do an update video as soon as I find uh, some cheap ammo to run through it. And we'll see how it does the few hundred more rounds through it. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, make sure you hit that thumbs up. If you think someone else will get something out of it, make sure you share it out. That helps more than anything. And if you're new here and think I've earned it, consider subscribing. We'll see you on the next one.